Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to show you how to create some motion with colored pencil. Sometimes a stamp set just makes you want to create a technique, and I wanted to really make this little guy soar across the page. These are the colors of Prismacolor pencil I'll be using. I can't wait to show you how easy it is to make him look like he's super flying. First for coloring the snowman who I realized later like he's not built like any snowman that we would normally build outside. And I realized this as a young girl that Frosty the snowman in the cartoon had legs. And I know that that really confused me because we just make three balls and stack them on top of each other and we call that a snowman. So snowman having legs is kind of an interesting thing, but I will just leave you with that thought. So every time you see a snowman with legs, you'll have the same question I did. But I'm using a color that is a little bit on the medium blue side. And one of the reasons that I'm not going solely light is because when we're coloring something white on a white background, you need one or the other to have some, I guess, beefy color to it. A lot of people don't put enough contrast in their work, and then they look at it and they think, well, why does that not look like what I want it to look like? And most of the time, I would suggest that contrast would help most anything. So I like to use some richer colors. If you choose too dark of a blue for something like this, you can fix that. Just go over top of it with a white pencil. And I'm doing the same sort of thing here, but with a light, really, really pale blue pencil. And for those in the colored pencil jumpstart class, this is a pressure of about four on the scale that I give you and that we've practiced in class. And what that's doing is serving as the white pencil blending but it's just adding a little bit of color instead of just subtracting color, which is what the white pencil will do. It just keeps making everything paler that it's coloring over top of. And I'll still be doing some blending with a blending solution after this, which you can still do, but you can tell that I'm getting a really nice blend across this just from using a medium and a light blue pencil. And I hesitate to even call that medium because it's not quite medium, but you know what I mean. It's darker than a light pencil. I'm using a different color. I'm using a gray for the other whites in the picture. So the blades of the, the skates as well as the fuzz on the hat because that will make them look like they are a different surface than the snow. And then the blue gives him a really cold snowy feel. You could also do the reverse. You could do him in the gray and the fuzz in blue or do a cream for one of them as long as they're different because that will just differentiate them when somebody's looking at that snowman face and trying to determine what that hat is and where it stop, starts and stops and meets up with his face. So there you go. I'm using Prismacolors but this technique I'm going to show you is going to work with any colored pencils that you use when we get to that. I don't put the colors on the screen generally because there's just a few of them and I do have the colors listed on my blog as well so if you're looking for which shades they are but I do hope that with colored pencils especially I know it's harder with Copics so I do put the colors on the screen for those um, but for pencils for the most part a medium green is a medium green you can use whatever medium green you have because it's not dependent on what it's blending with. Whereas with Copic markers, there's a little more relationship between the colors that I'm choosing that you're trying to learn from. So hopefully not listing the colors on screen and just having them on my blog is okay. And I do apologize for some of the times when I say in the video that I'm gonna put it on the screen and then I don't, so yeah. I find when I take a picture of it, like I did at the beginning of this video, then at least I have that to reference so I don't forget what pencil colors that I ended up using. This little set from Art Impressions has not only this cute snowman, but it has a couple other images in it, and I will be showing you those at the end of this video as finished cards. And as always, you can see all of them and pin them 
to your Pinterest and that sort of thing from over on my blog. There's always a link to my blog in the doobly-doo, as well as all the supplies are listed there and listed over on the blog. And I do appreciate your assistance and your support by using my links to make your purchases when you're going to buy the thing anyway. It doesn't cost you anything extra and I do get a small commission and it does help to support the cost of making all these videos because it is not free for us to make all this stuff for you. So use the links of your favorite YouTubers when you're going to make a purchase. So here is where the motion magic comes in and I'm using a blending stump while the color is just there. I'm not, I haven't blended it at all with any blending solution. I'm just using the dry stump to drag color out behind the image. So whatever stamp you're using, if you want to give it that look, you can just pull color out before you do other blending techniques because there's that kind of loose pigment on the end of each of the, the objects and you can use that to create that look of motion. So now that those parts are done, I can go back through and use my Gamsol to blend all of these, these colors so they're softly blended into each other. And that's a, a nice process to watch and just see the colors get richer and richer. I tend to go from lightest color to darkest color. So I did all of the blue light bulbs first and then the blue snowman. You can get a sharpener, which is basically a little piece of, of uh, sandpaper on a little handle and uh, sharpen these and clean them. Or you can just wipe them off in your pants like I do or on a piece of scratch paper and that often is enough to to make it work. But if you go from lightest color to darkest color, then sometimes you don't even have to take that time to, to do that. You just move from one color to another and it doesn't drag too much color into the next shade. If you missed my recent soapbox moment, I've had a few of them lately, I wanted to mention that one of the things that, that is kind of breaking my heart is the state of the craft industry in a particular area, which is counterfeiting. The counterfeiting that's going on is making me nuts. Because what I'm finding, I'm having a couple companies that have been asking me not to show full stamp sets in photographs anymore. And that is kind of like, okay, I'm trying to help you promote your product. But what's happening is these companies, a lot of Chinese counterfeiters are ripping off their designs and making knockoffs. And they're not only doing that now from the photographs, but they're following people like me and ripping off things from my like videos. So when I have a picture of the stamp in the video, they're taking a screenshot and making a rip off copy. So if you've wondered why sometimes the lines don't look quite right, or there's just something funky about them, that's how they're doing it. They're stealing JPEGs, they're stealing screenshots and making counterfeit products. And I know for some people, they, they just put in the name of a stamp set and they look for whatever the best deal is on something and they find it at huge discount from some crazy foreign company that they don't know what it is. Those are generally counterfeiters. So do not buy from those sites. It's kind of like the whole idea around like drugs. They, they've always said that if, they, if we weren't buying the drugs, there would be no one selling drugs. Well, if we'd stop buying counterfeit goods, they'd stop making them. They'd move on to a different industry. They'd go start counterfeiting who knows what else and stop worrying about our craft stuff because our manufacturers are spending more time chasing down the counterfeit stuff than they are in making us new products. And we don't want that. We want them making cool stuff for us to use. And even if it costs you a couple of bucks more to buy it from a reputable place, please buy things from a reputable place. It's really important to keep our craft industry healthy. And it's I, every time I look at one of my images on the video now, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, how can I shoot this in a way that will teach you how to use it but will not give them the ability to rip it off and copy it. And I don't know what that solution is going to be. I might start filming things from an angle or something. I don't know. But it's making me very sad to think that that's happening because of what I'm creating to teach you something wonderful about how to color something.
So there we go. Another little diatribe from me on my soapbox. So bye from reputable places. So my finished card, I just put on a card base, kept it really super simple, but look at how it looks like he's flying across the ice. He's just soaring at top speed. This is another one of the stamps, well, a couple of stamps, the birdhouse and the little birdie. I drew my own trees and made my own clouds in this one. And then another one of them is these three little snowman holding a J-O and then making a Y. They kind of make me think of the YMCA of snowmen. So they're spelling something out, which I thought was pretty funny. And I did way too much snow in there. But there you go. There are my cards from this cute stamp set from Art Impressions. Links for all the supplies are in the doobly-doo. Pictures are on the blog to pin to your Pinterest board. And you can always click that like button and subscribe to get more from me. And I'll see you guys later.